Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. In this video, we're gonna see if we can take a picture of the Orion Nebula Messier 42 using a smartphone, an adapter, and a pair of budget binoculars. Now, in the past, uh, I've made a video about this uh, smartphone adapter and another one that's a bit more upmarket. And I've sh shown that they can be used to connect uh, a smartphone over the eyepiece of a telescope. But in this video, we're gonna go down budget somewhat and we're gonna see if we can connect similar arrangement of phone adapter onto a pair of binoculars and if we can get anything decent looking at the night sky. So you've got a smartphone, you've got a pair of binoculars lying around the house, what else are you going to need to have a go at taking a picture of the Orion Nebula? Well a couple of the things, you're going to need uh, an adapter, so this is one that I picked up online for around £15. It was branded by the Go Sky brand but there are lots of very similar looking adapters and they're basically a tray uh, and a clamp and then you can play around with the tray to adjust the position of the camera over the eyepiece but we'll come to that. The other thing you might need, one of the other things is you're going to need to have a way of holding the binoculars stable. So you're going to need a tripod which normally means that you're going to need to have a bracket that will attach the binoculars onto the tripod. So here's one here, it's like an L bracket, pretty cheap easy to get hold of and there's a standard size of fitting uh, on binoculars. And the other thing we're going to need is they're going to be an extra app on our phone. So even though we know that the camera on board standard modern smartphones is very good, for Astro we're going to need to be able to take control of some of the settings that are normally automated by the camera app. So I'm going to use an app called ProCam 8 but there are other apps around. I've used one called Nightcap and there are definitely several options you can take with this, but I'll just concentrate on, on using the one for the purpose of this video. So you need a phone, an app, an adapter, your binoculars, and something to hold the whole thing steady in the form of a tripod. Okay, so there are a couple of key skills you're gonna to have to master if we're gonna make this work. The first one is attaching the camera rigidly to the back of the binoculars. Now on this, this pair of binoculars, these are 10 by 50s, but all binoculars have got the two eyepieces basically the same distance apart. On these, uh, this particular model has got rubber eye caps. So you can see here that normally there is a rubber eye cap around the eyepiece to make it more comfortable when you hold it against your eye. I want to set this up so that I have the minimum distance between the camera phone and the back of the eyepiece. That's because the image is going to be at the best place when the camera is relatively close to the back of the eyepiece. So the first thing I want to do is roll back this rubber eye cap, which straight away gives me a couple extra millimetres. I can get that much closer to, to the back of the, uh, the eyepiece on the binoculars. And then secondly, I'm going to have to figure out how to attach this adapter. Now these are devilishly fiddly things. I have to say, you can do amazing things for only a few pounds, but I'm not going to come on here and tell you that they're easy to use. They are fiddly and you're going to have to practice. But as with a lot of things with Astro, the best thing is to practice during the day. Set up during the day, make all your mistakes when it's light, get all your focusing working, etc, etc, and only go outside when you're confident that your setup is just right. So basically, I've discovered by playing around during the day with this setup that I can get a nice solid clamp like that, hopefully you can see. And if I put this orientation of adapter, then the camera itself, when it sits here in the rack, it is then adjustable around the back of that eyepiece, which we'll come to. But the other thing is, when it is there, this eyepiece is also free, unobscured, and I can use it to actually find the object that I'm gonna be looking for and trying to photograph. So for me, with this particular set of uh, binoculars, this is the kind of orientation that is gonna work. And as you can see, I've, by taking the, removing the rubber eye cap, rolling it back, we're gonna have a very little distance between where the camera is and the back of the binoculars. Okay, after what seems like days, but it's probably only been 10 or 15 minutes, I think I've got everything lined up. So now I'm looking out of the window and I've managed to get the camera lined up with the back of this uh, binocular eyepiece lens. 
So after doing that, which is basically a process of moving the camera up and down and then left to right, and then after you've got it in the right place, filling the field of view of the camera with the image, then tighten everything down because the idea is we're going to better carry this whole setup outside and start taking photos. And if you need to readjust something at night, like the alignment between the back of the camera and the binocular uh, eyepiece, it's incredibly difficult because you haven't got any bright sort of reference like you have here, like a tree or something like that. So basically set it up during the day, clamp it all down, and that's really the only way this is going to work. Just to see one more thing, if we turn around and look, um, if I lift up the camera now, hopefully you can see that there is actually very little gap between the camera and the eyepiece lens. It's only maybe two or three millimeters, and that's what we need in order to be able to fill the frame of the camera, which is the intention. So that is the setup. That's just using the normal, in this case, iPhone camera app. But now we're gonna switch over to look at the app that we need to take astrophotos. Okay, so as I mentioned, the normal camera app that you have on a phone, a smartphone, isn't really up to the job of taking um, exposures at nighttime for of astronomical targets. So basically, I've swapped over to one called ProCam 8. Uh, it's just one of many options, but the main thing is it allows you to control more of the settings of the camera than you can using the standard app, which is really aimed at automating the settings on the camera. So if you imagine this is a bit like going from a point and click to a digital SLR in terms of being able to control the settings. So looking on the uh, on the app, one of the most important ones is here. It's telling me that I can set the format of the photo. So I can set it to be in uh, TIFF format or the standard format, but more importantly here, I can set it to, to, to record in RAW. So this is a format in which none of the data is lost. We can then manipulate that after we've taken many frames and we can manipulate that in a computer to take the best overall image of the target. So it is a raw um, camera output that we're going to be recording. And down here we've got a series of controls. The most important ones are here. We can control the exposure. So if I set the exposure, it's currently 1 800th of a second. At night time, for what we're going to try and do, we're going to go to the other extreme. We're going to go up all the way up to a full one second exposure. Now, we're not tracking the rotation of the Earth here, so with a one second exposure, I hope that with this amount of magnification, 10 by 50, that we don't see any trailing of the stars. But that can be a problem with long exposures, but this is one second is as far as we're going to go, and I think it's going to be okay. And the other setting that's important here is the ISO, so that is the speed setting. So again, the app is allowing me to control that, and actually in this case, I can set 3000 ISO. So basically the camera is at its most sensitive or is amplifying the signal uh, as, as mo the highest amount that it can and it's going to be opening the shutter for a whole second which is the longest period that you can control it to to do that for. So obviously that is aimed at grabbing as much light as we can even though it's only one second's worth of the target and then we can see what we can do in a computer afterwards if we, uh, if we have a look at the output. So that's it. You need an app like this. Figure it out during the day just like setting up, don't try and work out what all the uh, all the buttons do at night for the first time, because really you get it'd be frustrating and you'll probably give up. So allow yourself a couple of hours to familiarise yourself with attaching the the uh, camera and the adapter. Say so my recommendation is that you try to do it so you can still point the binocular using the remaining uh, lens, and then get everything set up. Practice during the day check, download the picture onto your computer, check that it is coming out in this raw format. It'll be a much larger file. In this case, each image is something like 10, 10 megabytes. So check that that's all working before you go out um, and do your actual session of capturing the Astro target. Okay, so let's just figure out where we're gonna be looking. Basically, Orion is currently in the south. If we zoom in a bit using Stellarium, we can see this is constellation of Orion. So we've got the very famous Orion's belt. And what we're interested in is here. So this is 
you are in Nebula. So that is basically where we're looking. Due south, very bright, should be very obvious. Okay, so we're looking at the camera now. We're set up on the Orion Nebula, and we're gonna take one second exposures, just over ISO 3000, using the timer. Here we go. And hopefully I can just leave this running, go inside and have a cup of tea. But of course, the earth is still turning, so realistically, it's gonna track across the field of, uh, of the binoculars fairly quickly. So uh, I'll go inside for a couple of minutes. So the hard work is done. Last night took 120 frames of the Orion Nebula, each of them one second long. And all we're gonna to do today is try and combine them into a single image. So what I've done is I've put them all onto my laptop and I'm gonna use a program called Deep Sky Stacker. And it's busy crunching away here. And basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the 120 frames, it's gonna try and line up the stars in uh, Orion one after another, and then it's gonna put them on top of each other, offsetting where necessary if there's any difference in the stars between frame to frame to frame. And of course there will be because looking through the back of the binoculars, the um, constellation, the Orion was slowly drifting through the frame as we were taking those pictures, even though only it was all done within five minutes. So I'm gonna use Deep Sky Stacker to take 120 frames. I'm gonna take the best 80% and get one single output frame. And that's gonna be the equivalent of taking a single photo for about one and a half minutes. And after that, that output file can just go into any photo editing software and we can manipulate it a bit. We can play with the brightness, we can try and enhance it, play with the color and see what we get. So here's the final image. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It basically works. We've seen that you can take some simple binoculars, a smartphone you've probably already got, spend a few pounds on an adapter and make it all come together. I'd say though, word of warning, this is not the easiest way to take an astrophoto. It is quite frustrating to use one of these uh, adapters and at night, it's gonna take a bit of practice to find the object, even something as bright as the Orion Nebula, it's going to be a bit frustrating, a bit fiddly, and you're gonna to have to try it a few times. But if you accept that, and you don't um, send me a comment telling, telling me I said it was easy, because it isn't, if you accept all that, and it may be a little bit of a challenge, then it's definitely a way of producing a deep sky photo without spending too much money. I'm certainly gonna have a go at taking more photos of other bright deep sky objects using this setup. So I hope it's been useful. Um, if you like this video, then please subscribe to Genom's Astro and thanks for watching.